Hello everyone, this is Joe from Swing This Kettlebell and Strength, kbmuscle.com and thekettlebelllocker.com. Over my years, decade plus of training with kettlebells and teaching people how to do how to use kettlebells in their day-to-day -day life, I haven't seen that much for really, really good beginners, basic kettlebell training. Like actually how to get into how to start kettlebell training. So what I did, I made a quick little list here. Um, of how to start kettlebell workout, how to start kettlebell training. And it's kind of going to be all over, but I'm just going to jump into certain things. So you have this idea that you want to start training with kettlebells or using kettlebells. All right, first thing we're going to, first is area. Where are you going to be using kettlebells? Is this going to be at your home? Is it going to be at a gym? Um, so you're going to want to have an area. So depends on what you're going to do, but let's just say like a six by six foot place that can give you plenty of room to do stuff you're gonna need ceilings at least if you're a normal size height person you're gonna need at least an eight foot ceiling I'd recommend nine or ten um, you just wanna have a place that you're not gonna swing snatch hit something with your kettlebell um, basements are usually good for people um, like kinda athletic rooms you've maybe had some um, some dense mats underneath in case you were to drop kettlebells. So the thing is, kettlebells weren't meant to be dropped. It's like Olympic lifting, people dropping weights a lot. You see this in gyms all the time, but kettlebells weren't really meant to be dropped. Um, so but think about that. They, there is a lot more movement that you're going to be doing. So if you do drop it, you might want to have kind of a, a nice um, horse stall mat type, if that's something you want to do, if you're going to be the weights are possibly going to fall. You don't want to hurt any of the floor. Okay, so another thing is, um, let's get into weights. All right, this this is a broad statement, um, but it just depends on really how much how much experience do you have in actually by like your body moving your body training. Have you used a kettlebell ever? If you're really strong and you're just trying to add kettlebells for for a guy, maybe start with like a sixteen. Um, don't think you have to start with a 53 pound kettlebell because that's silly. You're not going to do too many reps and you possibly could get yourself injured. Personally, I got two 12 kilogram bells, two 16 kilogram bells, and a 24 when I first started. Now, let's say you're a lady or any a person that's just, you haven't lifted, you might want to start lighter. So, an eight kilogram bell or something, that's 16 pounds. So let's say anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds would be a really good time, place to start. Um, if you get something really light, like a lot of people are seeing in, let's just say big, big um, box, either, either gyms that stack a bunch of little kettlebells or say like a Walmart or something like that, a Target, they have like five and 10 pound kettlebells. You're not going to get much out of that. You're going to increase your form and you're going to jump past that weight very, very soon. So let's just say anywhere 15 to 20 pound kettlebell. You can start off with doing deadlifts and swings and things like that. Okay, so now here, time. How long do you really need to train with kettlebell? So some people get in and they think there's going to be an hour long training. You don't need that. How much are you doing now? If you want to get started, 10, 15, 20 minutes is going to be totally fine because if you're at zero right now, that's plenty of time. That's an increase and then you can work from there. If you start with these really long programs or workouts that you might find you know, online and just do way too much, your chances of injury are going to be high. You're going to be exhausted. Um, it, it's going to throw a lot of stuff off. So start light. Let's start with 10, 15, 20 minutes. 30 minutes maximum when you're first starting, okay? And a lot of the stuff you should be doing uh, workouts that include a, a nice warm-up, a joint mobility warm-up, um, getting, getting ready for the exercise, not just jumping right into the kettlebell swings, not just jumping right into presses and things like that. Okay, so let's get into this. Clothes and shoes. So you want to wear a little bit more, um, not really, really loose fitting shorts or something if you're doing kettlebell swings. So the chances of that kettlebell or your hands getting stuck in that loose fabric are pretty high. If you're doing kettlebell cleans or snatches, things like that. Snatches are not a beginner exercise, they're later. Cleans are. Um, so yeah, so maybe tighter fitting clothing, something that makes you feel comfortable, breathable, stuff like that. Um, if you're getting into kettlebell, almost everything is standing. You're going to be doing a lot more 
overall movement than if you were sitting on machines at a gym that you may be used to. Okay, so calorie burn, calorie usage is going to be high. Um, you're going to generate some heat. You might be really, really sweaty. So shoes is a big thing. Um, a lot of people do it barefoot, but if you're really sweaty, you got to make sure that you're not going to slip. So I like to do minimal shoes. Um, shoes with a zero drop, so not a big heel, not a really cushy shoe. Um, let's see. So running shoes are kind of, I want to, those are out of the question. I want to get those out. So let's do um, flat, low soled shoes that don't have a lot of cushion. There's a lot of different ones that you can use, but usually minimalist shoes are good. Um, so exercise and pro programs, here's the thing. There's not too much out there. There's a lot of people saying, here's some beginner kettlebell exercise, and they just throw out a whole bunch of them to you. Without warm-ups and focus exercises that are ready to get you ready to do the kettlebell exercises. Some beginner exercises include the deadlift, the, a goblet squat or a squat, um, kettlebell swing, kettlebell clean, let's bring into your shoulder, to the rack position, um, kettlebell presses, some people add all these things, rows, they add up in possibly a Turkish get-up if that's something, but a Turkish get-up really isn't an exercise, but more of a string of movements together, okay? So there are multiple movements that make up that complex exercise. So cleans always before you do kettlebell snatches. I, when I see people doing kettlebell snatches, I want them to revert and just stop doing it. Cleans, and if you want to get it over your head, presses until you're very, very good at bringing the kettlebell to your rack position with a clean, there's no point, there's no reason to do snatches. All right, so nutrition, we'll get into that. Um, when you train, you're not gonna wanna have a lot of food sitting in your belly, so something that you can digest with an hour before that of training. Um, a lot of people are just starting kettlebells and they hear things like fasting, different ways to um, burn, use fat, use up fat stores faster. I don't really recommend a person to be fasting and then try a kettlebell workout if they haven't done it before. Okay, so make sure that you're properly hydrated. Make sure that you have enough energy, that you're not getting, you know, lightheaded or dizzy, things like that. Um, that brings us to rest. So rest, we definitely, this is something new and it's very, very uh, challenging for the nervous system because there's a lot more movement, there's a lot more balance and stability that stability that you may have not done before. Um, the kettlebell is always trying to take you down to the ground. So we have to really focus on that. Um, make sure that you're not getting dizzy. Your heart rate's not staying too high. I like to use a heart rate monitor. Some people, um, if you wear something around your wrist, that's not going to be a good thing. The kettlebell is going to hit it. So you can either spin it to the inside of your wrist or to wear a chest chest strap monitor um, that you can watch your heart rate on your phone or an app or something like that. I think that's incredibly beneficial. Then you don't have to stick to how much rest time. You actually go to where your personal heart rate is for recovery. I think that's a great way to start if you're getting into kettlebell training. Um, let's see. Expectations. A lot of people think you know, can I, can I lose fat in one spot? Let's let's just say in the torso abdominal area. So kettlebell is going to use, it's going to take a lot of calories to, to do your workout, and that, that's great. But also, that's really going to come from having better nutritional intake, um, staying hydrated and lowering stress. So once again, I think that fasting and stuff like that can increase stress on the body. If you're already a person that's stressed working at, you know, at your job and then coming home and doing a stressful kettlebell workout, your overall stress levels are going to increase. So what we want to do is kind of focus on things like on off days such as yoga, mindfulness, meditation, things that you can that you can help bring your stress levels down. Um, as far as nutrition afterwards, some people do carbohydrates, some people don't. I, I'm not going to be, I'm not that nutritionist for you. You're going to have to ask someone, you know, if Test out different things and see what works the best for you. Um, so my philosophy as far as finding exercise programs, and obviously I have a few, and that's why I kind of made this video, because a lot of people are starting kettlebell training, and I see that they're following these people that have been doing it for a, a long time, but they're following at that level and expecting to be able to do what they're doing. You're not going to be able to do what I do 
since I've been doing it for nearly 12 years. So I made a couple basic kettlebell programs. Some are paid, some are free. Uh, I'm going to put the links down below and you can choose that. Um, they'll take you to videos of the exercises so you can learn how to do them safely and hopefully, most of all, have fun because exercise and fitness should be about enjoying it, enjoying how your body moves, enjoying how it feels afterwards for your mental and emotional state, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just don't just follow every single influencer on Instagram out there, every YouTube channel. Pick a few of them that are really, really good and just keep that information coming in minimal. The information that you're having that's coming in will be from really good experienced coaches such as myself and our channel and other, other folks that we recommend. Um, but that coming in, you'll always see stuff that's not really trying to push you to try all these crazy workouts. So you can go at your own pace and you're getting good information. I'm um, trying to think of other things. So expectations from starting kettlebell training. Some people gain um, gain some muscle because they're not used to training their whole body in this way. Um, they're not used to training their body, their whole body every time they exercise. Okay, so even though you're doing presses overhead, you're still training your torso and your legs. Um, some people lose weight rapidly. Hopefully, that's body fat. Um, with coupled with a good diet, nutritional intake, stuff like that. Um, some people notice that they're they get really lean around the midsection. So that's a couple different things. Instead of losing just fat around the midsection, you could also be working on controlling how your midsection looks through muscle activation. Um, the, your core torso is going to be used a lot to control your body. Um, so you could be working on bracing your spine for all these exercises. And that might make you look a little different. So I wouldn't recommend just following a scale, but other than just how you feel and how your clothes fit, um, stuff like that. Um, once again, I'm going to post the link for some of our kettlebell programs down below. And obviously they're going to be attached to some uh, programs that I have that are more advanced. But make sure that you do these beginners and fundamental programs first before you move on to something that's intermediate intermediate or advanced um, I know a lot of people just want to really jump into it but if you do that your chances of getting injured are much higher and I want to see you training how we really really change how I've built a lot of muscle is because I constantly do this stuff it's not it didn't happen in two months um, and also if I'm going for body fat or body recomposition Eight weeks really isn't that long. It's doing it over and over and doing it constantly, um, repetitiously, that's going to allow you to change your body. So consistency is key. I know that people say it all the time, but it's absolutely true when it comes to training with kettlebells. Um, so consistency is key. It's going to make your form better. Let's always focus on form over flash and all that stuff. Um, so if you have any questions down below as far as beginning stuff, please shoot me a message, leave a comment down below, and pass this video around, and hopefully I can help you and a lot of other people get started on their basic kettlebell journey, how to start kettlebells. Hopefully this right here helps you out. Thanks a lot.